I study systems engineering and study systems problems. perhaps some of our growth opportunities are around understanding that range of impacts on the various kinds of capital that will allow us to continue to develop and making those decisions and embracing the full costs and benefits um, um, as we go along. I think people are aware that they are making decisions. I think that the issue arises because you have cumulative impacts of, of multiple people making decisions, you know, and um, uh, you know, in a certain sense, if you do increase the number of lanes, and I'm used to driving for, let's say, 20 minutes to get to work every morning, and all of a sudden you cut it down by 15 minutes, and the economics are such that if I move further out, I'm going to get, you know, more real estate for my money, then I'm likely to move further out. This, these are individual decisions, isn't it? And drive more. So very soon, the you know, um, expansion that was done, which was supposed to accommodate some of this congestion, really also becomes a trigger for more driving, and then we have more congestion, and, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, at some level, I think we need some congestion, right? If we really are serious about having people use multiple modes, because I may be more likely to use public transportation if there is some congestion, right? Um, but then, of course, it has to be, um, you know, it has to be convenient and have, have a high quality of service as well. You know, I mean, part of all this is really coming up with a, a vision that embraces all the modes of transportation and then the lifestyle choices we want to have, right? Um, putting down some policies that embrace them all so that we understand, for example, perhaps what levels of congestion we think are appropriate for a certain modal split, right? Um, uh, and then really understanding the, the full costs and the fact that if we are not able to quantify the costs, it doesn't make them go away. So we have to incorporate them in the decision making somehow, you know, and, um, uh, and then embracing it with some maturity and moving forward. Because I don't think the problems we talk about should surprise us because we created them. And the fixes are not purely technological. I mean, I think the fixes are the interface of technology and human behavior collective. And we are at the point where we can really model these things. We can provide information to people so that they make intelligent choices that result in outcomes that benefit all of us. And I think perhaps we are going to see more of that as we move forward. This event is a good one because I think we are too busy these days. So we don't have, well, let me speak for my, myself. I think sometimes we can just keep going and we, we don't really take the time to think in a sustained manner, holistically about issues such as these. So I think this is a great event. I, I also think it's been very well organized. Um, and I think the opportunity to come here with folks, you know, who are sitting on maybe different sides of the issue, but have given it much thought. Uh, you know, bringing all those kinds of people together and having this kind of dialogue, I think, only just really increases, um, you know, the, the kinds of 
um, perceived opportunities that we have to solve these problems and also not just solve problems but perhaps think more creatively and create some better scenarios for the future. So I think this is an excellent conference. Well, this is the first time I heard about SMART, but I think that's great because it means I can build some, uh, hopefully some nice collaborations with some of the folks um, here because, I mean, I think that uh, this, you know, penchant uh, of looking at infrastructure as a transformative agent, I think it's one of the ways we have to go. Um, because in other words, I think, uh, the looking at in infrastructure solely as a functional um, element of our society is probably what has brought us to this place. So we really sort of have to start to look at it in broader terms. And the fact that you can really use infrastructure to create different kinds of wealth and, um, uh, and do so comprehensively, you know, in ways that are enduring and sustainable. And so I think that um, in my mind, from what I've heard, about the smart facility, that's what it's trying to do, and it's great that it's taken le the leadership, to, you know, to to advance some of this thinking um, at the global level today.